This episode of the Houseplant Home Tour on Plant One On Me is brought to you by fourth generation family owned and operated Espoma Organic, which produces superior organic gardening products for both the indoor and outdoor gardener. You can look out for Espoma products like their potting medium, amendments, and organic fertilizers at your local garden center and at espoma.com. Okay, there's just some two random silky chickens just hanging out outside the Kulemborg station stop. They're just so funny and so fluffy. Everywhere I go, I see little kips. Doesn't matter if I'm in Singapore or Thailand or the Netherlands. I know a lot of plant people want to know what it's like to actually live in a greenhouse. And last year I came to Kulemburg in the Netherlands and I came upon this community. And what's interesting is that some of these houses are actually built in greenhouses. So it's not true greenhouse conditions, but I thought, man, it would be really cool to actually meet somebody here who's growing plants and to find out what it's like to live in a pseudo greenhouse. So this is more of the eco-village in Kulemborg, and there's a guy who's uh, driving some plant clippings around. Looks like maybe he's pruning today. Oh, it smells nice here. It's like a really nice autumn day here in the Netherlands. A little bit of blue sky left. Otherwise, it's fairly overcast. Got some apples right up here. So you start to see a lot more homes with solar panels on. And this is the village that also has some homes that have, that are built inside little greenhouses or just using glass to create a little bit more like a greenhouse condition. You know, to grow plants, grow food. So this is an interesting construction because it looks like they're using very thick reeds on the side of this house for building material. And that's probably similarly to what grows just right here near the marsh edges. Some bee boxes in the distance and some sheep. Well, it looks like it's apple season. Wonder what all these kinds are. So this is really nice because this feels like a little bit more of a community orchard, although I don't know if it is. And um, I just saw a mother with her son just above here, just picking off some apples. So if there's that option of just like natively picking the fruits, the vegetables that are around you. I just really like that feeling as part of a community. Hey kitty, 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 kitty. Hey little kitty. Hey kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, hello, hi, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, and run right by you. <laughs> just like a cat, love you and leave you. Hey, How's it going? hi, welcome. Nice to be back here. Hi. It looks even greener than what it was before. Yeah, it's uh, it's growing fast here. It's yeah. like a, a greenhouse. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've uh, I guess you've kind of grown into the place, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, actually, the plants have grown. Yeah, into the, place. the plants have grown into the place. <laughs> Last year, I visited Kulemburg because I was curious to check out an ecological village in the area with plenty of glass houses. While I was there, I met Amar, an architect who had moved into one of the experimental homes. I know last year I didn't really get a chance to talk a little bit more about the house and moving in here. And I'd love for you to just like share maybe a little bit about what you do and how it relates to the house and a little bit about how this house is constructed. Well, I'm an architect and we bought this house in, uh, four years ago. It's uh, almost 20 years old now. But it's a project and um, the, it's an experimental house where it should be self-sufficient. For that time, it was really like an, um, an experiment. Construction wasn't that well, so we placed a new roof last year. And from that, we'll go working down and actually an, um, renovate the whole house. Wow. And making it an, an energy neutral house again. Okay, so you were doing it in stages and even though this was done 20 years ago, the idea was it for it to be an energy neutral yeah. house, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It was, um, it's built in one of the largest ecological and, um, villages in the Netherlands, also in Europe still, one of the largest ones. And, and um, well, at that time, actually the green was one of the 
and um, innovative and the aspects of it. And the um, energy and um, producing aspect wasn't that and, uh, well developed yet. But nowadays you can build like, and um, it's normal to build energy for sufficient house. So, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about how the glass, because uh, you are really surrounded by glass. And I wouldn't say that this is a true greenhouse, but it has a lot of greenhouse elements of it. And I loved for you to talk a little bit about what the glass's role is or what it was meant to be for in this house. Yeah. Well, the house is an, um, an, uh, faced to the south. So uh -huh. the whole roof is an, uh, faced to the south to produce energy because of the solar panels on the roof. And, and um, the construction was made so that the roof is hanging on the construction from the outside, so that you can place glass all around. Hmm. So you have a 360 degrees view and daylight coming in. But the smart thing about this is that the south facing windows are smaller than the east and west facing windows. So you get this and, um, sunrise and sunset light coming in. And it's really nice also for the plants. And tell me a little bit more about why it would be a challenge if the southern windows were actually larger. Well, it would be very hot here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in summer, and, yeah. um, it was like an, um, in the beginning, like five degrees warmer than the outside temperature. Like when it's 30 degrees Celsius, it's like 35 inside. But since we renovated the roof and, and uh, installed a heat pump exchanger, it also and uh, cools the heat and uh, the heated floor, so it, it's also cooling now. It's like five degrees cooler than outside. So you see that in, um, in, um, the energy system and also the, the insulation and the building is working together with this. It's amazing what you could do just to tweak the system yeah. ever so slightly so that you know five degrees cooler and five degrees warmer and it makes a huge difference yeah. when you're living in the house. And I even know just from having southwest facing windows in my yeah. home, and you know they're not nearly this large, but uh, even just getting them in the afternoon, that that heat yeah. intensity and the intensity of the light is is pretty dramatic. Yeah, that's correct. That's yeah. why you know, all the doors can be open. We have this large sliding door up on the, in the in the upside, so and, um, that the air can also go to the to the living room and and cool the, uh, the area in a natural way. Yeah. So there's like a little bit more natural flow then, yeah. which. It sounds like you have to do occasionally with all this yeah. with all this window space. Yeah. And one of the things, obviously, that loves probably this amount of light is the plants. And I just mm -hmm. see that the last time I was here, which I happened to just you were outside. Yeah. And I happened to like. <laughs> I, I was working on. I was painting the construction. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because it's an endless project. Yeah. You know, you become a homeowner, and it's like an endless project. Yeah. You never. You're never not busy. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, your, your plant collection has really grown, both in size and in number, it seems yeah. like. And I would just imagine with east, west, a little bit of south facing windows, 360 degrees around, uh, you have you know, carte blanche, like all these plants have carte blanche yeah. and, and have this nice uh, temperature and humidity all yeah. year round, which is quite wonderful because I know a lot of people, especially homeowners or apartment dwellers, are always short on light, they're short on yeah. humidity, and that doesn't seem like a problem here. Yeah, that's correct. And mm -hmm. um, actually at our previous house, we had the same problems, and we moved the plants here, and actually the same plants started thriving. They grew like crazy, and it's now, it's like more like an, um, some plants I had to give away because they were growing to the, to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed as I was walking through yeah. here and some of the other greenhouses, um, where the houses are kind of like built into the, the greenhouse, uh, some of the plants were actually coming out yeah. of the, the roof or yeah. the ceilings. <laughs> and the difference with that greenhouse is that they get cold in the winter mm. because it's not their living area. Right. And here it's the living area, part of the house, so it's actually room temperature all year round. Yeah. So it's ideal for tropical plants. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've learned a lot through the yeah. process. And yeah. so when did you really actually start your love for plants? Because you said you brought some over here from your old apartment. Yeah. Um, well, it started when I was born. Yeah. I was born in Suriname, South America. And, um, and I was, as a child, I was playing in the garden with all these tropical plants. And it was like, wow, it was in, um, in, um, actually embedded in my DNA yeah. <laughs> for some part. And, and uh, when I moved to the Netherlands when I was eight, and uh, I really missed the plants. So actually, when I was eight years old in my own room, I placed plants. So for more like in, um, in, um, 25 years now, I've been collecting plants 
in the Netherlands. And well, this is the result of the collection of all, the, all those years of experience and, and the collecting the plants. Well, I think you're lucky because moving to the Netherlands at eight, I mean, Netherlands is a country that is, has a, a really deep appreciation for plants. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily always the plants that you grew up with, but some of those subtropical and tropical varieties of plants are probably from Suriname. Yeah. So you get a little sense of like home in yeah, those, in those plants as well. Yeah. Well, should we go through and you take us yeah. through a little bit of um, some of the, the plants yeah. in your collection? Sure. Yeah. That's great. I mean, obviously over here is just this magnificent monster delicioso. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these fenestrations are out of this world. Well, it's actually a cutting. Yeah. We took it two years ago from our vacation to an, uh, La Palma. It's one yeah. of the Canarian islands. And it was like this an, um, yeah, small cutting with yeah. only one leaf. Oh my goodness. And in two years time, an, um, it now has an, uh, like more than 12 leaves. <sighs> and it's like growing rate is really astonishing. I yeah. mean, I know that people are, you know, completely probably jealous of this, but yeah. I mean, I just and have to And look at my, how many holes it has. So yeah. many holes. I mean, yeah. this is a, like a botanical garden specimen yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna, if that, if that was just within two years, I mean, yeah. you could just imagine if I come yeah. back here in five years. <laughs> it would be to the, <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, ceiling. Yeah, exactly, you're going to have to tack it through. You're going to have to, you know, kind of do any type of repairs here so yeah. that you could actually physically tack your plants yeah. up and like, you know, um, or just be taking cuttings and giving yeah. them to friends and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually I took an, um, three cuttings. This, this, is the, this was the smallest one, mm. but I in a repotted it in a larger pot and, and um, there you can see behind that, this was the second oh, one. Oh wow, right over here. But I kept it in a smaller pot, so yeah. you can see the difference in yeah. what it does when you repot it in yeah. a bigger pot and give it more an, um, an, um, yeah, nutrition. How much are you actually um, watering these plants? A lot. a lot. A lot, yeah. Because and, um, you s also see it in the topics, mm -hmm. and uh, they grow around ponds also and mm -hmm. wet places. Mm -hmm. And the roots, they actually grow in water. Yeah. So they thrive at that place because yeah. of the high humidity and yeah. the access accessibility of water. Yeah, I remember actually just putting all those aerial roots in like this giant basin filled yeah. with water and they just filled out yeah. the basin and you move it out yeah. and it's like the shape of the basin. Well, actually, repotting those is a difficult task yeah. because they, they grow in the pot and and they stick to the pot so so well that mm -hmm. you can't even take them out so. yeah <laughs> you're like cutting them out of their girdle yeah, yeah. <laughs> so or, or cutting the pot pot open is yes also exactly a yeah but. exactly um so what other what other plants do you have kind of growing around well a lot of uh, palms mm -hmm. and, um, it's actually one of my and um, my favorites are uh, palm trees mm. and, and um, this is the arcotone phoenix cunninghamia and it was actually it didn't have a trunk and um, when we moved in here, I bought it. It was like this and, um, small and, um, seedling. Yeah. And now it's like an adult so uh, palm. And, uh, and, it, and it's, it's now... touching the, the ceiling. See, this is the, this is the challenge that you have. And also what greenhouses and botanic gardens have is that they have these real statement pieces, yeah. right? And then you think you've built tall enough. Yeah. 35 meters in the air or whatever it is, and then it's never tall enough. It's never tall, never enough. tall yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, also have uh, a lot of other and, um, palm trees, mm -hmm. like the foxtail mm -hmm. or the Woodyetia bifurcata. And next to it is one of the family of the bottle palms or the spindle palms. I think some people will actually be so envious of you because it is challenging to grow yeah. palm trees in yeah. regular homes and apartments. Yeah. But th these are some of your favorite. Is this something that you kind of remember as a yeah. youth? And um, actually, one of the my favorites is mm -hmm. one of the most difficult palms to keep in house. Is the coconut tree? Ah. It's the Cocos lucifera. Do you think you could actually get fruits here? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one I. Um, got from uh, another palm enthusiastic. Yeah. We have an online community. It's called Palm Fans in the Netherlands. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, and we exchange uh, plants together. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, this person, and, um, I got it from him uh, four years ago. And it was a small seedling with only two leaves. And uh, you can also see the coconut uh, still there. Yeah. But and, uh, I had two of them. One of them died. And yeah. um, it was only the, the one in soil died. But this one I placed in hydroculture. Huh. So to keep it moist yeah. and the humidity high. Yeah. 
So that's actually the key in keeping this palm alive, is that it needs a lot of humidity. Wow, well, I love that you experimented because oftentimes I'll get two plants yeah. and I'll try them. Sometimes it's just like different lighting conditions. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty amazing that you have just experimented that yourself and found what, yeah. what actually works. Yeah. And at this stage, it, and, uh, I've never seen an, uh, a large and a coconut tree in, in, a, in a living room. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't have any, just any living room here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to remind you. Yeah. <laughs> well, another uh, nice monstera is the Thai constellation. Yes, which it's I a very popular just one. got a gift as a gift from a friend. Yeah. Which and this one beautiful. I've only had for uh, three months now. And you already see the holes coming out. So mm -hmm. the heat and the sunlight is really charging the plant mm. to, to thrive. And there's already a new leaf uh, coming out of it. Yeah, and, you, and this is obviously directly in your South. southern window. Yeah. yeah. Tell me a little bit about the glass here. Is there any kind of UV protection or what type of glass are you using on the home? There is a bit of UV protection mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's double uh, sided glass. Mm -hmm. And, and um, because of the surface is so large, there's enough light coming in. But and, um, the plants, that's actually one of my secrets, in summertime, I place like half of the plants outside. Yeah. So the humidity is high and yeah. they can get the rain. Yeah. And also against pest it's ideal so yeah. the natural balance is restored yeah and, and um, outside they grow better yeah and i find that with some of my plants like my nidoscolius actinifolius mm -hmm. which is a chaya it is very susceptible to spider mites yeah. indoors yeah. as soon as i put it outside it's great i take it in in winter it's deciduous it's so yeah. it loses all its leaves and just looks like a stem but as soon as spring comes around boom right outside yeah. of my balcony again yeah yeah. Well, actually, on spider mites, mm -hmm. and um, I have I use bio biological uh, way of. I love seeing them. this. Yes. It's uh, from a Dutch company, yep. Coppert, and it's this is called the uh, Spicol Plus, but it's an, um, a kind of predator that a small kind of spider that eats yeah. spider mites. Yeah, predatory mite, yeah. right? Like, yeah. and they're, and typically they're often tinier and a little bit yeah. faster than spider mites. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I love seeing this, and this is a great way to do it. Um, I've also seen in botanic gardens where they just use a little burlap, and they'll put, yeah. especially if they come in bran, and they'll they'll put the bran and the the biological, you know, insect or mite in it, and then they'll just hang it, and it looks, you know, quite nice. But I'm, I, it's nice to see another plant owner yeah. actually using biological yeah. means. Well, actually, yesterday I bought an, um, a new batch, and uh, this is also another one. It's against the scale bugs. Oh, oh, that's an interesting one. It's I don't like think they a actually really so small, small wasp. Wasp. Yeah. And this is scale bug, so you oh, can see how small it is. So good, because scale is a little bit more yeah. challenging. Yeah. Is it also good on mealybug scale, like mealybugs? No. no. For just like bugs, the hard scale. I use another one. It's yeah. the um, larvae of the beetle and the bugs. Oh, so the crypt. It's yeah, a larvae. But you yeah. could get the larvae here. Yeah. That's well, hard because we actually, can't get the larvae. You can see here the larvae and, yeah. and um, they're going to the next phase. Oh, yep, there it is because it looks almost yep. like a mealybug. Yep. Oh my goodness. They're transforming here. Yes. So I leave them on the pot. This is great because you can only get the beetle in yep. the US for some reason. And, and the here beetle, you can get the larvae. It gets attracted yep. to, the, to the light. Yep. Yeah, wow, that's fantastic. Or when your window is open, they fly away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I was, I was always wondering why can't I get a ladybird larvae or a crypt larvae? Um, and they said that they have to wild harvest them, that it's actually hard to, uh, you know, kind of grow them in a, in a kind of in a uh, laboratory conditions, mm -hmm. which that's what they told me. I don't know if it's true, okay. but it seems like you could get them here, but this is one of the premier places to yeah. actually get, you know, biological. Well, actually, and uh, I have a large stock from my neighbors because yeah. in one of the greenhouses, they have like this fig tree, yeah. but they the release in the summer like 50 of these larvae and because of the mealybugs are in so large amounts yeah. they and uh, thrive and like now they have like hundreds of these larvae and they need to get out crawling yeah. in there in a yeah. greenhouse yeah. and I can just take a few and oh, place them here so good I yeah. love seeing it I love seeing how close they, closely they Maybe resemble we can find their another predator. one still and uh, moving yeah. because I set out a lot of them uh, outside I hear this one. I hear there's one on the floor. <laughs> I hope this one is alive. Sometimes they're not really smart. Yeah. Because they, and, um, 
they're actually a quite dumb creatures. Yeah, well, I even found when they're when um, when the adults are, I have to kind of collect them, corral them from the windows, yeah. and put them back on yeah. their prey. And, and they I'm actually like, fall guys. out of leaves, yeah. and then you have to place them yeah. back because they <laughs> lost their way and they aren't on the plants anymore. I know. Yeah. But we'll try and find uh, one that's uh, still alive. But when they get alive. hungry, I bet I bet any money when they when they want food, they will find it. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever release lace wings? No. No, you don't no. have lace wings here. No. Okay, see, those are like my main predators, but they're also the ones that I could get as larvae, and they are really voracious and generally good generalists. Okay. But um, I don't know if they're native here, and I also don't know if they are effective against scale. So yeah. that's a that's a good one to know. I should probably point this out. Yeah. The the philodendron. This is a varicosum. varicosum. Yeah. yeah, and then a philodendron pink princess, which yeah. is like so hot yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, you see them in, um, in a lot of stores right now in the Netherlands. It's yeah. a real hype, yeah. even on marketplace. <laughs> it's like uh, the prices are getting so high. It's like crazy. I know. Yeah. That's why yeah. I feel yeah. so happy to have gotten so many plants early. Yeah before the, the price hikes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even here in the Netherlands, like the prices are still so much more affordable than in the United States. Yeah. I mean, the price hikes in the United States are kind of insane. But, um, but yeah, I feel very fortunate that I was like collecting way yeah. before the, <laughs> the price hike. <laughs> And then okay. you have a little bit more of a bonsai. Is this yeah. like a, a ficus? Yeah. A type of ficus? I got this from my and, um, two brothers as a gift mm. and, um, when you and I got married. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice gift and it's still growing. So yeah. yeah. Do you do any kind of pruning on it at all? Um, Root one, pruning one, time, or one time per year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And actually it's time to prune it again because yeah. it stood outside in the, in, the, in the summer. But now it's time to cut it back a bit. Yeah. Is this a strudel? Ravanaya and uh, Madagascarianus. It's the yeah. Madagascar and the Traveler's uh, tree. Oh, okay. Wow. It's, it looks like the Sulicias, yeah. but it's not. Huh. In, um, this is a, a young plant, but when they get in adult phase, they have this like large, yeah. um, one direction phased uh, the foliage. Does it naturally, um, does it? Does it naturally start to well, actually, have serration, or is this that happened type of... outside because okay, it's so outside. the wind, so and, the wind yeah. and, um, and, um, did this? Well, I, I see that you have some nepenthes kind of growing yeah. up here. This is the mojito. It's uh, actually a new one I got, a really wow. large one, and we have smaller ones growing here just to all of the place. And this one is uh, an anthurium. Do you know what species this is? And, um, yes, it's this the... The darifolium? Yeah, okay. Correct. And these are just starting to cling on, these little philodendrons. Yeah. So cool. Look and at this. this is also an anthurium. It's yeah. the, is that the me me metallicum. Yeah. yeah. You always have to, I, you know, once you start to like have the foliage fill out, I'm always a little bit more, maybe less mindful when when they start to shade out others, but I, I don't think you have to worry about that because you're getting like light 360 degrees around. Exactly. <laughs> and it's actually looking like a rainforest forest canopy because yeah. of the difference in the heights yeah. and, the, and the plants growing on top of each other, so yeah. And then you have a tetrasperma yeah. here. And this one's new for me. It's the Monsera pinatiara. Oh, see, we don't get that. I have. I have not seen that in the um, cultivation, like okay. in cultivation in the United States. Yeah. I think the only time I saw it was in Singapore. And it had a flower, it was here, oh. a really nice white flower. Yeah. It forms, and at a really young stage, uh, it can flower already. Hmm. And this is the Philodendron Florida ghost. Ghost, yeah, that's a beautiful yeah. version of it because it's like lightly speckled. And then, of course, another one of yeah. your. Monster Delicioso, is, is that just a variegated yeah, the kind? Variegated, yeah, the Borgesiana. Yes. Well, actually, this one I have now for six months, and I have a larger one, you know, almost for four years now, <laughs> which is this one. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's already is that the one that I originally year. saw? Yes. Yeah, okay. Lost the one. Much, lar uh, much larger now, obviously, yeah. though, <laughs> if my memory serves me correctly. And I'm trying to experiment because I repotted it mm -hmm. and I planted a Thai constellation. I see it on the little bottom, yeah. And just seeing how it works out. Yeah. If you can see the difference when yeah. the leaves go, grow bigger. Well, it's great that you're experimenting here. And then, of course, you have the pancake yeah. plant. So like, yeah. what, what, like, Dutch person doesn't, doesn't you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
Pancakes is also my favorite food. So. Oh, well, you know what? You know, I, I, I have to tell you, there's, yeah. some, like, there's some good pancakes here, too, yeah, so yeah, you're, yeah. you're good on that. And then it looks like you were experimenting with um, some kind of terrarium. Yeah. Light well, bulb, but terrarium we, light bulb? We, we made this ourselves yeah. and, um, also like four years ago mm -hmm. and it was really small, but all the ferns, these are the roots of the fern. Yeah, look at how they they're grabbing the on. And there's a new fern growing like in the air. Oh my goodness. And I haven't watered it like for two years now. So wow. it's all, and, um, the ecosystem is like self-sustaining. So yeah. So what is it growing in or on? Like what is like, the medium? Um, the hydro, call, the hydro, uh, uh, the, yeah, the hydro um, balls, balls or whatever, yeah. yeah. And then a uh, moss. Yeah. It's actually moss from outside, oh. from the garden, so <laughs> it's a local uh, product. Huh. And then some small plants like ferns, but other plants, but they, you can see the ferns, they took over like the whole bowl. Yeah. And, and what else did you have planted in there other than the ferns? And uh, other Anything? small, uh, actually a small palm tree. Oh, okay. But so that one probably yeah. got, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have to, I'm looking at this right now and yeah. my biopod at home, which is a polydarium, I like really need to weed whack yeah. that. And I'm yeah. I'm like, where did that Hoffmania go? It's yeah. probably like engulfed, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the ferns are probably growing they on your palm tree. And yeah. It's actually not even accessible now because the, the opening is uh, is blocked by the roots now, <laughs> and it also has light. Mm. If you turn it on. Mm. And then here you have a Signonium erythrophyllum yeah, right here. That's correct. Beautiful. Yeah. And another palm, which I've, I've never grown one of these in my house, but are, are they easy to grow? They are easy to grow. It's the yeah. it's also called a metallicum. Yeah. I believe. Yes. And, and uh, it's actually oh, it's having a really little flower. Yeah. And seed. And this one was placed outside. But the snails and uh, got it a bit, so yeah. <laughs> that's also uh, <laughs> one of the cons of one placing of, uh, exactly plants outside. One of the fo nature, uh, follies of nature. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Yeah. And then is this a variegated jungle boogie, or which one? It's what kind the, is this? It's the the Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire. It's okay. It's a new one. It's yeah. uh, also very popular in the Netherlands, hmm. just like the fabric ocean, hmm. and and. Um, I think they, it's a kind of hybrid they, uh, they made. Yeah, it looks like a jungle boogie and then sometimes when things get like variegated or it looks a little different, they could always make it into another cultivar. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes they just never remember what they, what they uh, yeah. hybridized it with this, exactly. with this, with that, because and then it I becomes... Because I looked up the name, I couldn't find the botanical name. Exactly. Which it originated yeah. From, so, yeah, yeah, and sometimes they'll just never know. <laughs> and a croton? They're doing very well outside. Yeah. In the winter, you can see them going um, a bit um, harder. Yeah. But, and uh, when spring and time is in, I place them outside so they can uh, thrive again. And I prune them also so that the plant stays compact. Yeah. And Th I have another one here, which is actually having a flower. Oh. Which is also is unique. Always very nice to see a croton yeah. flower because yeah. I only yeah. sometimes see them in the, the botanic gardens. I hope it's still. Oh. Here, here's a yeah. little, yeah. Yeah, they're forming. Mm -hmm. This is actually a new one. So placing your plant outside mm -hmm. and, um, makes it happy. Because yeah. When it has flowers, you can see the old flower. This one oh, is, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. It's just the nest. Yeah. Does it have a scent? Do you know? No. No, okay. Actually, I haven't smelled it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I always try to like yeah. stick my nose in there when I'm like, is it smell or not? But sometimes... It has a scent at night, sometimes it has a scent in the morning. Another ficus here. This one um, was one of my old neighbors who moved in, uh, last year and it was in a bit of a bad state. So I pruned it and, um, a lot and I repotted it and it's like, it's perfect. It looks good as yeah. new. It's actually in winter, it's our Christmas tree. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's we so nice. We decorate it with light and uh, some uh, some uh, objects and well, uh, it's a, a Christmas tree. So what we a don't great use idea. A, a normal tree uh, t that's cut down or uh, repotted, so it's uh, natural also. Well, I hope other people follow that lead because I think that is such a great idea and especially if you're a plant lover yeah. and you're not like having to chop down a tree. I mean, when I was growing up I and mean, we had put a fake tree, but it was like, um, it looked real. So everybody's like, where did you get that tree? And it was fake. <laughs> However, when I was a really young girl, my um, dad would get trees, but with root balls. Mm -hmm. 
and then he would plant them out, and like 30 years later, there'd be these like massive yes. like yeah. blue spruces outside <laughs> in like the the yard. So I think that was like a nice nice gesture. And it's a tradition, and um, in Suriname we also did it with our ficus trees. Really? Yeah. So oh. I was it's a memory of my youth. Oh, that's yeah. so marvelous yeah. that you you can have that. It's like yeah. full circle. Yeah. And then you have some more palms yeah. and also some some Schlumbergera right here. Yeah, that's correct. It's the um, majestic palm. Also. Those are really hard to grow. We could find them in the United States, but I always recommend to people like yeah. not getting them just because they are so hard to grow in an apartment setting. Has this been challenging for you, no. or has it been good? No. Oh, God. It was like, an, um, I bought it and it was like one third of the size. Oh, wow. It was really like a small plant. So your, your key to palms here is obviously giving it like a tremendous amount of light. And humidity. And humidity. And then what's what's the watering schedule like for you in this? I'm trying to, that, that's south, so this is... It depends is, yeah. on the outside temperature and yeah. the sun. When yeah. the sun shines, it gets a lot of hotter here. Mm -hmm. So you have to water them more. But also one of my secrets is I don't use an, um, water from the crane, but an, uh, we use groundwater. Mm. We have a groundwater pump mm. and, and um, it has less an, um, calcium mm. and, and uh, more nutrients from the ground. Mm. So the plants uh, get their nutrients also in that way and, uh, through the water. So are you doing any kind of fertilizing whatsoever? Yes, and, uh, a mixture. And uh, for the palms, I use the more slow release like in, um, in a mixture. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of the plants, more the organic like. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it can be a fluid, like in, um, in, uh, you also went to Stack yeah. in Rotterdam. Yeah. They have like all this water shit. Okay, <laughs> water <laughs> shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's like from the sewage. Yeah. They retrieve the nutrients yeah. and they sell it for a plant fertilizer. Oh, interesting, and yeah. it's and it's slow release. When you water the plants, you and, um, don't use it that concentrated. Yeah, so you have to water it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in with your water. Your Schlumbergers seem to be getting a little bit more light because they're they're yeah. reddening here. Yeah. Um, and they're flowering also a lot. Yeah. Like multiple times per year. And that's interesting. So they're probably, sometimes when a plant gets a little bit more stress, which is not yeah. always a bad thing, it actually has a tendency to flower. Yeah. So sometimes when we think about, well, how do we actually get my plant to flower? It's yeah. like, stop babying them. Yeah. Give it a little stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, fantastic. What color flowers do you get on these? And, um, white and uh, red. Okay. Wow. Nice. Yeah. And some more nepenthes over yeah, here? a lot of nepenthes. And, and uh, well, actually, they are one of the more effective plants in summertime when the door is open. We get a lot of flies and other and, um, bugs inside. Mm -hmm. And in nighttime, they like disappear because <laughs> we got these plants and I'm guessing they're uh, being yeah. eaten up by, yeah. uh, by the nepenthes. Well, no fertilization necessary no, then no, if, they're, no. if they're having a healthy Just diet of flies. Yeah. 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 Is this a papaya or no, what is this? It's a breadfruit tree. Oh, breadfruit. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's also um, actually new on the market now. And, and uh, but the nice one with this is the brand and, um, which is bringing this plant on the market. Mm -hmm. When they sell ten of these plants, one is planted in the um, in Africa. Hmm. So is it native also, to Africa? Do you know? Uh, I think so. Also, okay. and also yeah. to South America. Mm. So and uh, more in the topics, and they uh, give to the community a plant back. That's really marvelous. I've only seen breadfruit once or twice in the U.S. market. I'm not saying it's not available, but like in my garden centers, I've only seen it a couple of times. So I have no experience in growing it. And this is relatively new for you yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. I have it uh, now, I think also for six months. So okay. It has to go to its first winter now. Yeah. yeah. Are you using the, po um, the grower's potting medium? Um, well, actually, I make my own mixture. Okay with an, um, a bit of cocoa peat okay. and, and um, I use, an, um, depending on the plant, if it's yeah. a palm tree, I use a mixture of slow release in it mm -hmm. and I mix it with the local organic and, um, and, um, potting mix they sell at the urban farm here hmm. and then I mix it. Hmm. That's nice, yeah, because yeah. I, I noticed some like yeah. slow release yeah, in here. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And then you have some behind here, and you have also some plants growing in, yeah, in yeah. the basin yeah. of, of your palm. That's also an experiment. Yeah. That's actually the... That's what I like to do with my ficus, because it, it gets really bare yeah. down there, but it's like perfect medium for smaller root plants to grow. And that's the Roystonia regia, or also called the Cuban king palm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm actually uh, very curious in how big this will, will go, because it's now 
and, uh, almost to the roof, but I can place it lower so that it has more yeah. space to go. <laughs> Needs a little bit more headspace exactly. soon, very soon. Yeah. You don't have a lot of like duplicates of your palms. So when you go to the Palm Friends Society or yeah. whatever it might be, how, what, do you, what do you exchange? Do you take one of yours and you're like, okay, this is outgrow my house or yeah. what, okay. And, you, and, um, and uh, you give one of your duplicates so yeah. you get only one in, one in, one in return. Yeah. Or you have an, uh, a lot of seedlings mm -hmm. because they're already also so and uh, are a some lot of them plants. self are some of them self fertile? Um, or no, I buy seeds. Oh, you buy seeds. And propagate okay. them. Oh, nice. And when you have a lot of them, yeah. you can exchange them. Yeah. So oh, that's those such are a great idea. Or just buy it from someone who has a plant over. Mm. And do you like to start your seedlings outside, or do you have a? I mean, this is practically indoor outdoor, but like, yeah. <laughs> or do you like to start them inside, inside. here? Inside. Okay. That's the best way because of. If you start it outside, mm -hmm. you have the snails, mm -hmm. and they eat like all the seedlings. <laughs> also, in our kitchen garden, it's a, it's a, a hell of a challenge, a yeah. challenge to 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 grow our food. Also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I have to tell you, my dad got so upset with the snails and the slugs. Uh, last year in his outdoor garden that he's like almost exclusively growing indoors now. <laughs> but he can't grow food as much as he can prolifically outdoors, but he was like just so fed up with the snails and slugs. Well, actually talking about food, mm -hmm. we had an, um, last year around Christmas, we had our first edible bananas. Wow, here indoors. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Well, actually the plant you saw last year, yeah. the Musa Cavendish, yeah. there was one standing behind. You can see the trunk of the mother plant yep. still there. And these are the two and, um, and, um, new sprouts that have grown in one year. Now. Yeah, wow. And we had like a large and, um, and, um, yeah, trunk of bananas. Wow. So would you s separate these two or will you keep them in there? I think I'll keep them in there. Okay. As also as an experiment yeah. in, uh, in how it will uh, go then. And you can see also the crypto bug. It's a bit moving. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see it right there. Yeah. That one right there, right? You could tell that it's a crypto bug, even though it looks yeah, like a mealy bug, because it actually bug. moves. Yeah, because it moves, uh, faster. Yeah, and it has more like these white tentacles yeah. sticking out. Yeah, yeah, because a mealy bug really just kind of plants itself in yeah. in one place. And I, I have this video of um of a mature crypt eating a mealy bug, and the mealy bug can't really move, but it's like, oh, I got it. People found so much satisfaction in it because I think they, they really understand the, 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 the hate that they have for mealy bugs yeah. preying on their plants. Anything you'd like to highlight here? Well, this is also one of the cuttings I got from our vacations mm. to an, uh, Madeira. It's also a local uh, Musa Cavendish. And uh, wondering when it will flower. Yeah. They say banana trees flower after 40 to 50 leaves it mm -hmm. has, and then the last leaf is the flower. Oh. And then the, the trunk dies, and then the new and, um, and the seedlings come out of the, yeah, the, old, the roots. Yeah, yeah. I, I see some of the light just starting to come through now. It's starting to break through a little bit. There's some blue sky up there. It will get a, a, a whole new appearance of the, the place when the sun actually comes yeah. piling in. Yeah. And then you have some Nepenthes kind of trailing up yeah, here. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think, uh, about three to four meters long. <laughs> it's like in a small pot because yeah. and, uh, it gets all these flies and, yeah. uh, and flesh for food. So yeah. it doesn't need any uh, extra nutrition. Do you also get any kind of fungus gnats here or not no, really? Not no, not really. Okay, yeah. good to know. And then, do you have? Are these some grow lights, or you don't need any grow lights, really, no, or do you? No, it's uh, actually only uh, it's a design object. So yeah. The only place we have grow lights is um, at the kitchen. Kitchen for your kitchen for the herbs. Herbs. And, yeah. And, and um, well, in winter, the temperature and, um, lowers a bit, so mm -hmm. it's not like 25 to 30 degrees, but more like 20, 19 degrees. And then and, um, the plants go to a more like slower growing rate, mm. and they don't need so much light. Yeah. And when you bring your plants out um, in warmer weather, because we're not necessarily technically in warmer weather, do they make it out to the balcony? Do they make it down on the ground or on the balcony? Yep. And also in the garden. Okay. I can show you outside. Yeah. We have a lot of. And, um, there are also and, uh, and a part of the plants are still outside. Oh, okay. So this is not the whole yeah. collection inside. Yeah. <laughs> And, and uh, these are also doing very well outside. Yeah, these are like a plectranthus, a type of, yeah. right, yeah, coleus. And they do the best outside. 
I've discovered. Oh, lemon verbena? Yeah. Mm, yummy. Because inside it's a more difficult plant, I yeah. discovered, but outside they start to flower. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and uh, they go really, really well. Yeah. Mm, so good. They're really great window box plants and things along those lines. So, so. And the lemon verbena smells so good. One of my favorite tea flavors, lemon verbena. And actually, it was nice to see if you look over the balcony. Mm -hmm. You can see we also have these uh, oh, wow. Japanese uh, banana. Yeah. And Down also below. The, the Chinese windmill palm. Down and there, they, yes. Uh, they stay like for all winter outside. Wow. And it's also an experiment. At first time I and, um, protected them for the winter. Mm -hmm. So but with now, a burlap or? Yeah. Okay. But now, and last winter I did nothing. And like the the trunk survived because we had a really mm -hmm. mild winter mm -hmm. and it's doing very well. Now. Maybe it actually helps that it's uh, positioned against the house, you know, so it's probably protecting it to a certain degree. And it's placed to the west, so yeah. it doesn't get the cold east right. wind. And, and um, the temperature doesn't and, um, decline so much here. Yeah. Sometimes, like, it, we have um, some of the turkey figs that grow in our community garden. And oftentimes, if, if it's they're not usually protected, nobody protects them. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, if you um, don't protect it, it, it stops growing up and it starts to grow out right. yeah. uh, a little bit more. So it starts to crawl, which is fine if fine. you don't mind that habit. Um, but that's great that you're experimenting yeah. to see like what, yeah. how cold will it go. Exactly. Yeah. And on the other side, we have the same batch of plants. This one is even getting oh, a bit wow. bigger. Oh, wow. Bigger, bigger, yeah. It's another hybrid I got from a local... And a nursery here in the Netherlands and this one is like growing really fast. Well sometimes the hybrids you know are hybrids and, and actually are built, built for like the strength yeah. of you know growing. so of, yeah of growing so I think that maybe that's serving it well as well. Yeah that's fantastic great view also yeah. to be able to look at the garden from above. This is the wet banana or also called the Musa Cavendish Daka. It's also a new plant on the market now. And this is the one that actually gets the red banana. Yes. What color flowers does it have? Do you know? I don't know yet, oh, but I have great. these plants for also six months now. Yeah. But I'm uh, hoping that it will flower also indoors. I see a little one maybe yeah. coming up here too. That's also one of the signals that an, um, the mother plant is an, uh, getting at its mature state. Yeah. So it doesn't have to take long that the flower will form. Sometimes people will cut those little ones off, mm -hmm. or you just leave them on. I just leave them yeah. on. Yeah, so nice. Like, I mean, look at all these things that you could be growing that I can't typically grow in my house. So this is like a really wonderful <laughs> experience, <laughs> you know, to see yeah. to see it and and to know that you had kind of an apartment experience before yeah. this without all the window light and just to yeah. acknowledge how much more it actually grows in this situation yeah. versus your previous situation. And of course, you have all these cats. Yeah. The largest cats that I've ever seen, the <laughs> largest house cats that I've ever witnessed in my entire life. We have five cats. Uh huh. And, and uh, well, they go well together. Yeah. And also, they leave the plants alone. So that's, fantastic. that's fantastic. I mean, I was yeah. going to say, yeah. do you have any kind of uh, tips for, for, for bad well, kitties? The, but you don't have bad kitties. In the beginning, and, um, when two of Julius and Cesar, mm -hmm. they were small, and uh, we got them two years ago when they were like uh, 10 weeks old. And um, in their last week at their previous owner, they went outside in the garden. So they got used to digging in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, was really a bad habit. Yeah. The first week they were here, like all the plants, and there was like soil everywhere. <laughs> because of all the plants, they started digging and just playing around. Yeah. So what I did was like this, and, um, place these chicken and... Um, and, um, like a chicken wire? Chicken wire. Yeah. Like on all of the, the pots. Yeah. Around them or over the soil. Yeah. And it took like a year to <laughs> that the cats were not more interested in the plants. <laughs> and also making them wet. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was going to say sometimes yeah. like citrus sprays. Yeah. You know, cats yeah. hate citrus. Yeah. You know, a little water. Yeah, yeah they'll learn their lesson. Yeah. But now, now it's not uh, necessary anymore. Yeah, now they're just like little tigers in their yeah. own jungle. Yeah. Good kitties. And we have a special room for them. Oh, yeah? Show it, uh, oh, yeah. Let's do a little cat room. Are you going to show us your cat room? 
Where's your kitty cat room, huh? <laughs> yes, I miss cats. I had so many cats yeah. growing up, yeah. So many. I lived between a farm and the ASPCA, uh -huh. which is like where stray cats and dogs go. Uh -huh. And so li having a house be you know, between those two facilities, you always get stray cats. Yeah. And so they would always come to our doorstep and my mom um, had a soft heart and so we would take them in and try to find homes for them. And some of them we ended up keeping. I think we had 23 cats that came through and so, we found wow. homes for, yeah. Oh, yes, oh, just like rub up, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, here in our bedroom we have uh, another special plant. Oh, I also got from the, the palm friend community, also called palm in mm -hmm. Dutch. It's actually not a palm tree, but it looks like a palm tree. It's the Cardovica, and it's more like a leafy plant, mm -hmm. but the, it doesn't get a trunk, but the leaves can get very high. You can see this one is also mm. growing higher. Yeah. And it's in the, in the tropics, it grows on the forest floor, so it doesn't get much sunlight. Right, so, so it's like an understory, yeah. yeah. So I place them also in a, this is a north-facing mm -hmm. window, so it doesn't get a lot of uh, sun, sunlight, actually not. Yeah. And these are a little bit more like parlor palms, right? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. a Mexican dwarf palm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and um, here we have also an, another an, uh, anterium. Is this a crystallinum? Yes. Yeah, nice. And, uh, the, the and it flowered as well yeah. right here, just yeah. to see the what the spathe and the spadex, spadex actually looks like. Well, that's a nice thing. A lot of plants just start to flower mm -hmm. um, and, um, indoors here, mm -hmm. like the banana trees. And, and, um, and um, this is also another one that had a flower, but it, uh, it was in the... In here. Yeah, it died back. This is also the same hybrid, the also called Ring of Fire. Yeah. Which in the botanical name, it's not uh, <laughs> known anymore. <laughs> no, not so much. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like you have a geranium over there in the window. Yeah. Is that one that has a scent or? It's the, actually this one is effective against an... Um, oh, the citronella one, yeah, yes. Yeah, citronella one. Mm -hmm. Against mm. the, um, the... Mosquitoes, mosquitoes right? Yeah. yeah. Another Musa? Is this like a little baby one this that you had taken? This is a special one because you can see the trunk is, has this white kind of... Oh uh, yeah, look at that. It's wow, the, it's very powdery. Yeah, it's a special one. It's the... I can look up that name yeah. <laughs> later. Look at that. I didn't realize it would be yeah. so powdery because yeah. sometimes when you rub it, it doesn't rub off, yeah. you know, the way that this one has. And this one can grow really big. Yeah, and okay. A large trunk. So you're saying yeah. two years from now I, I should come back. Well, actually, <laughs> that's also a thing. If I keep it in small pots, yeah. they stay small. Yeah. But the moment I repot it, yeah. it's like, boom, it's yeah. growing And I'd bigger. imagine now this one you're growing in a little bit more of yeah. a kind of a darker condition, yeah. so it might stay it a little small. 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 Yeah. yeah. And, and then this is also an interesting one. It's the Cariota mitis, but the variegated one. Wow, it's very variegated. Yeah. So I'm I wonder uh, if that's going to survive. Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Very pale. Very little chlorophyll in that guy. Yeah, keep me updated on that yeah. one. I, you know, you could always, oh, I would say not always, but maybe it, you could graft it onto a stronger rootstock, perhaps too. I don't know if, it, if that would, if that would, 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 that yeah. would work, yeah. um, if it starts to struggle at all. Yeah. And then, do you know what kind of begonia this is? Uh, no. Oh. It's a, I'm, I'm terrible with cultivars of, yeah. of begonias, but and it looks... Actually, I got it as a present, so... Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I, what I like about begonias, um, not all of begonias, but some of begonias, mm -hmm. is that they really bring a shock of color, yeah. you know, to the foliage mix, because just like you had some of the coleus outside, it comes in so many different color exactly. ways, and even when something is not blooming, and sometimes well, actually, blooms are insignificant... Well, actually, this bloomed also. You can see here there oh, were... Oh, yeah, a little one. Little one. Little flower. Just, uh, but I mean, begonia blooms aren't so great, but yeah. the foliage, boom, yeah. lots of color already. So, exactly. nice yeah. gift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll move on to the next room. Yes. And the cat <laughs> is hiding in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, down here we have some special plants. Oh, I wasn't down here last time. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. And we're still in a renovating here, so the ceiling is missing. Yeah. <laughs> But this one is also, I had this at, in my previous apartment, 
This is the Caryota mitis, or the fishtail palm. The fishtail palm. palm, yeah. And it's grown like really big. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, this double and, um, leaves. I actually um, have never tried this in my home, but I heard that this is actually a fairly easy palm to yeah. grow. So in your old apartment you had yeah. this, was it still a it fairly good? It was in the east, mm -hmm. under the facing window, mm -hmm. and it grew okay. Okay. Yeah. Happier here though. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this one is special because it was at my father's office it stood. Hmm. It's the Kentia palm. But he died like 13 years ago. Mm. And I got this in, uh, from his office because it was in his office. And the plant is like, I think, maybe 20 years or older. Wow. So it's a really old uh, palm and still doing well. That's good. And you have a little memory of your dad yeah. too. Yeah. Is this yeah. growing completely in hydrostones? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And just uh, fertilize it with special uh, hydroculture and fertilizer. Mm. And then it's, uh, it keeps uh, growing. Do you typically have something that is high in nitrogen? Or um, what is your uh, fertilizer that you're using for your palms, like well, NP and K? Or? Well, for palms, I use special fertilizer, yeah. especially for the palms. And, uh, and um, the N is a bit higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know the exact uh, numbers, mm -hmm. but they use a lot of, and, um, they grow the fa that fast, mm -hmm. so they need a lot of energy to, to keep on growing. Yeah, so w the ones that you're growing in hydrostones, you're using something different than the yeah. ones that you're using yeah. upstairs, which yeah. was like the mix of the slow release yeah. and then some of the um, organic, organic medium. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. And here we have the humilis palm. Mm -hmm. It's a bit harder to grow. You can see that it has a bit of a crispy edging. Crispy edging. Yeah. And um, I haven't seen only in, in the, the real topics you can see that the leaves are perfect. Yeah. But it's indoors. It's a bit uh, tougher. But this one is also I took from my previous apartment. So yeah. It's um, going uh, along now. Yeah. Well, it's nice that you're kind of like you know trying to help it along. I I have to admit that these are really beautiful. Like the feathery. Yeah. Fronds are actually quite lovely. And you don't see them also a lot on the market. So yeah. this is a, a unique uh, example. Yeah. I love how you have just like layer and layer of plants, yeah. even yeah. in like what would be your like considered your basement yeah. area. <laughs> and uh, behind that, there is the oh, I see. Yeah. Maxima. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a special one, which can grow really big. Mm -hmm. This one is like two years old and like the new leaf is like almost more than a meter long so I'm uh, very curious in how big this this one can get because it gets at a larger and a mature state compared to the the Cariota mitis uh, which is and, um, and, uh, more generally on the market. How do you make your decision on what plants you are looking for that you want to get in your home? And uh, Plants that remind me uh, what I had in the garden in Suriname so that is one, one way, but also in the, on the online community, we uh, exchange information on new plants and, uh, or new discoveries or plants that are very beautiful. And, and um, I try to find them. Do you ever have any struggles with um, specific plants that you had tried to grow in the environment? And um, yes, and um, a few palms haven't made it and uh, more like the real topic ones mm -hmm. that need a high humidity like 80% or higher. Mm. These are very difficult to keep, like the lipstick palm. Mm. It's like almost impossible yeah. With to the nice indoors. red, yeah. oh, that's yeah. so, yeah. it would be amazing if you could yeah. actually do that, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's uh, no, uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's not possible. Yeah, yeah. but it's but you had tried, yeah. 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 It's a tough thing too, because sometimes when they're larger plants, like you feel a little bit more like, oh, this is a bigger risk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. Okay, let's move further to the cat room. Yeah. We have this cat training. No, do they use yes, this? They, use they it. don't. That's like a hamster wheel. Yeah, but for cats. That's crazy. Yeah. So if they need to like lose Exercise. a few pounds, yeah, they uh, exactly. they go into the cat wheel. And oh, here. come on. No, come on. Here Are you salt. really? <laughs> salt kind of modeling in the cat room. Yeah. Our only lady in house. Oh, hello, Salt. Hello, yeah. And probably the smallest little yeah, one. the smallest one. 
Oh, look at this. And they have their own little kitty tree. Did you make this or is somebody, did somebody make this? It's an artist and um, it was an old and, um, fruit tree Yeah. here from the local area. And he placed like uh, these uh, cuttings from different uh, trees from cities. He used them as an, um, like, like these planks for the cats. Did you, you want to come over here, Salt? Salt, you want to come over here? <laughs> She's like, no way. <laughs> no way. I'm going to stay right here. Oh my God, this is and, uh, so funny. Jeroen made this in a room his, himself. All the cabinets, all the cat and the <laughs> the cat, little cat cutouts. Yeah. Unbelievable. Look at this. Oh, demonstrating. Maybe you'll, uh, come here. Caesar. Caesar. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a giant white bear. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen cats so large. Caesar, come here. Oh, come, kitty, come. Oh, you're so large. Oh, show us what it's like to live on the cat tree. Yes. I'll show you outside. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe I should probably put my shoes back on. <laughs> Let's go outside and see the other plants. Well, starting at the balcony here in front. We also have the Moreni banana. It's also uh, very common here in the Netherlands. And that's different from your red banana then? Yeah, it's yeah. a different one because this one can tolerate more lower temperatures. Mm -hmm. And, and um, this one also gets more larger, mm -hmm. but the fruit isn't edible. Hmm. It's not edible? It's not edible, no. Oh. It's more like a, a more nice palm, mm -hmm. or a more nice banana to you to have. Is it, is it inedible or is it just like straight up like... It has no Toxic. taste. Toxic. Okay, it has no taste. Okay, so it, has, it hasn't been bred for its fruit then, yeah. Exactly. And here's also a special silicia. Yeah. Red... Those are, we, don't, we don't often get to see these in the U.S. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what the, the um, species name is of this? I think the, it's from Madagascar uh -huh. also, but not the name. Uh, yeah. And you can see the difference. Yeah. Are the these other. like wisteria vines out here? Yeah. Oh, nice. Like do you ever try to hack those back? They are really like aggressive, thriving, aggressive. Yeah. yeah. But they like getting hacked yeah. back too. Yeah. Like that's the They're masochistic. Yeah. And in spring, it's like wow, a flower season. Yeah, flower. I love. That's spring. that's what you love about them when you're just like, oh, the blooms. And these are still flowering. So yeah. Nice. And maybe I'll just take a cutting for the winter mm -hmm. and then leave the rest outside and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I actually take some cuttings. They're not hardy in the, the Northeast, and yeah. so they usually die back. Yeah. Sometimes I'll cut off, I'll deadhead the flowers, and I'll cut off the flowers just so that their energy goes more towards the leaves yeah. as well, yeah. Oh, and a lot of hookahs right here. Yeah, I, so I've started to get into these as well, like outdoors, because you, they have so many different beautiful colors, colors of yeah. foliage. Yeah. I actually started to go like through a goth phase yeah. in my garden and started to get like darker <laughs> colored plants. So like the really dark hookahs that stood out for me. And they're also very popular in the Netherlands. These are just the ones I got yesterday. Yeah. I still have to plant them in the garden. And there's like endless hybrid forms and, and they're crossings. so resilient yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, forget it. I mean, some of the slugs. Oh, look yeah. at the chickens. Hello. Hello, kippies. Well, actually, these two ladies, they came with a house. They were from the first owner. And they're like more than 10 years old. Oh, wow. So they're really old ladies. Yeah, so they're no, no more egg laying. No. Uh, well, actually, they laid a few eggs this year. Yeah. But they're like retired now yeah. and enjoying... Uh, Just enjoying little chicken yeah. life. Hey, girls. How are you doing? Do you know kind of... Um, chickens they are? They're actually, uh, it's an old Dutch breed, yeah. a really old one, yeah. and they're really tough. So yeah. they, that's why they're also old. Yeah. And um, they are very hardy and can yeah. survive uh, any condition. Well, they are very, I, I love the little white neck and yeah. all the kind of like the black kind of guinea fowl look yeah. from the back. Oh, one's oh. like, oh, I gotta poop. <laughs> I gotta poop. One thing about chickens is they poop a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here we have uh, a few plants that will move in the coming weeks inside. Also the uh, Dracaena. Dracaena, yes. This is actually one of my first plants I got in the Netherlands. 
So it's like an, um, an, uh, more than 25 years old now. Wow. And uh, it was like this really small plant. Mm -hmm. And now it's like a tree. I actually really love the form. I mean, it yeah. has like the, this little green top and this yeah. kind of Dr. Seuss uh, yeah. stem growing yeah. up. And the uh, Chinese windmill palm, also the same. In which you have some growing in the ground. Yeah. And, and some in, in, pots. in pots. And this yeah. one stays outside uh, through the winter. And when it really gets cold, I just place a coconut uh, and some extra coconut uh, protection uh, on top of it. Mm. And here we have the other Morelli banana. This is the green one, but with the, the red. The red mid underneath, yeah. yeah. And we have some cannas. And a very hardy avocado. I was gonna say, look at this. This one can handle five degrees Celsius. So wow. It's a really tough one. Yeah. And uh, it's also going very nice. Some hostas that look like they've been yeah. held hostage by the slugs yeah. and snails. <laughs> and you can always see they're getting uh, to fall in, uh, into the winter. Yep. So uh, the leaves are uh, retracting the energy. And here we have uh, a yucca. Mm -hmm. I had a huge one of these in my house. They're quite picky if you get up yeah. close to them. It was growing in my window. I had to yeah. cut it back and I gave one of the cuttings to a friend because it just got too large, yeah. which yours is quite sizable. Yeah. This one you also bring in. Yes, and this one went outside because a tremendous amount of scale bugs. Mm. Just so I placed it underneath a tree and then almost most of the scale bugs, they got eaten up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you don't want that to be another vector no. in your house. There's yeah. a couple of mine that have like mealybugs that I ha like. I have to, like, I, I can't just like move them outside because yeah. somebody will probably take it. Or yeah, <laughs> and you ha actually <laughs> have a lot of green and uh, you need yes. it because of the other insects that prey on the, the, the scale bugs and yeah. mealybugs. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. You had a lot of beneficials out here yeah. and they could just naturally like attack them. It's yeah. the Dixonia wow, Antarctica. <gasps> Yeah, the Dixonia, look how yeah. thick it is. That is so I actually nice. These, had, are, uh, these are pretty hardy too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a larger one, but it got so large that an, um, I hit, didn't have any space inside mm -hmm. to keep it uh, to winter. So, so I started with a smaller one. So this you do still have to bring one. in? Yeah. Okay. Actually, this one's breaking out of its own pot. Yeah. It's really growing also fast. Yeah. And, and uh, the nice thing is I have these winter hardy, they stay green in the winter. Yep. Can, uh, and are these rhododendrons to... as well? Yep, also. Okay. And uh, they look alike, the Dixonia. Yeah, so they do actually yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And then do you have some uh, um, Virginia creeper here? Do yeah. you have creepers? And yeah. Any grapes or anything? Else? And, um, well, actually, we have um, some apple trees here. Okay. And some. And, um, and, uh, Oh, I do see yeah. a little bit of grape back, grape back there. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This one stays in the ground. Yeah, this one stays in the ground, okay. and they do uh, well. And a lot of ferns, so you can get more like this tropical feel. Yeah, but you're don't you're not getting a lot of light here, though, no, are you? This is the north-facing yeah. uh, so plot of the garden. Hookahs, hostas, yeah. like ferns. This yeah. this all makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. it's very moist here. Yeah. As you can see also the moss growing uh, mm -hmm. between the plants, and uh, it's a nice place here. Yeah. And here are the here are yeah. the grapes. Edible. Yeah, edible. Bitter though, not not sweet. Not sweet yeah. yeah, and very seedy. Yeah. And if you that move uh, this way, did you ever think about trying to grow something up these areas? <laughs> well, actually, I still have to paint this part. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's how I met you. Yeah. Where you were painting in front. Yeah. 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 <laughs> endless. Endless. endless yeah. <laughs> and this is a nice place where we can sit in the summertime. This is more like the east, the morning sun. Mm -hmm. And if you move that way, we have more the south facing mm -hmm. sun. And we build this in a oh, nice shed. This is nice with all the little and stuff. Yeah, with the sedum roof. Yeah. We built it ourselves. And the wood is in a, treated with a, a, f a fungi. So it protects the wood from an, um, an, um, rotting and uh, the weather and other 
and a fungi. Yeah. So there's a fungus on yeah. here? Yeah. It's and you, a, do you know what kind? It's the it's a part that called fungi force. Oh. But the the exact name of the fungus I'm not I, quite uh, sure. I'll have to look it sure. up. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Does it's it's also does an, it have a natural the stain way. in it? Uh, uh, yes. You, okay. And you only have to treat it with oil. Natural oh. oil? Yeah, like a linseed once, oil or uh, yeah. something. Once per year. And that's uh, also a nutrition for the for the fungus. What is this? Do you know? What it's the see? king's fern. It's also a, a winter hardy fern, I so it stays love outside. This. Yeah, I can look up the like name how, of like, this. Like how roughly yeah. it is at yeah. around the edges, and here's yeah. one of your little snail friends right yeah. here. Likes to like probably eat all the little foliage. <laughs> and some bamboo you have yeah. growing here. A nice and a lot of uh, apple trees. Apples I see yeah. everywhere here, which is fa oh, A fantastic. lot of edible uh, fruit yeah. and plants we have I here. see people just picking yeah. off the apples, which is really lovely. So behind this apple tree, mm -hmm. we have, uh, it's called a canna Stuttgart. It's mm -hmm. also hybrid and it can grow really big. Yeah. It's a variegated one. You can see this one. This one's a nice leaf right here coming up in the back. It's getting a little bit uh, mangled by this, uh, by the, by the apple tree. <laughs> <laughs> I walk on further to the vegetable garden, in which we, in summer, we grow our own food. Some raspberries yeah. right here. They're still uh, edible. These are late season yeah. raspberries. Mm, nice. You can see the garden is getting to its last phase of this year. Yeah, but still quite a lot of harvest you can yeah. get here. And this is a, oh, a really big. Wow, look at those squash. Yeah. Some of them have busted through. Yeah. And I like the, that these flowers, they, um, these plants, they came uh, here oh, yeah, to so the wind. These, these are the verbenas. Yeah. These are great And I just let them grow. Pollinator. Exactly. Yeah, they so that nature, that, that there's a balance and um, which also worked great against yeah. mealybugs or other yeah. and, uh, pests that you don't want in your garden. And that you can create a natural balance uh, this way. And, and during the end of the year, I just let nature grow to the garden. And in the, in the spring, I will start over again mm. with new plants and mm. uh, vegetables. Well, some of these are probably, yeah. I know you have a lot of annuals here, but some of these are probably perennial and they yeah. just come back. Like that one? Yeah. Actually, those are seedlings from this year. That Swiss chard. Yeah. Wow. And it's growing like in a variety of colors. Yeah. It looks like you need to, to get an appetite for Swiss chard yeah. here because you yeah. need to harvest some more. <laughs> and this is a shared garden, so we yeah. share it with our neighbors. Oh, that's nice. It's like seven neighbors take care of this garden. Wow. It's actually public space. Yeah, so it's, it's like a little to... community garden, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Do you and have specific had. days that you come out here? To no, just, uh, when, just when, when it's uh, when nice it's weather and uh, then you meet your other neighbors yeah. and you work together on the garden. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Some nasturtiums over yeah. here. Wow. It's really have big. Taken yeah. over, yeah. yeah. And the seeds, they drop off and next year yeah. uh, new, uh, new ones will grow again. And the sunflowers are now, uh, <laughs> like in the last yeah. storm a few days, they got beaten up a bit. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're kind of on their last legs. Yeah, I mean, it is but they're awesome. really big, like this one. It has multiple flowers, really nice yeah. one. Yeah, look at all those seeds in there. Yeah, and many insects. Yeah, I'm surprised the birds haven't been feasting on these. No. So this is also a harvest for seeds for next year or for the birds. Mm. And now I'm looking at your roof here. I can actually see your solar panels yeah. from this, this uh, vantage point. Yeah. And also what the, the plants look like from out yeah. here. Well, what's special of uh, the roof of our house is that, well, actually south facing. Mm -hmm. Also, it looks like an, an, an insect, like the butterfly with its yeah. stretch and, yeah. uh, and uh, wings. And, and uh, you can see the construction where the roof is hanging on. And we placed a, a white and a finish on the roof mm -hmm. so that it doesn't heat up that much. Mm -hmm. And it's also more effective for the solar panels. Yeah. So oh, the efficiency... So it reflects back, yeah. 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 So the temperature doesn't uh, get that high. On black roofs, the temperature can get to 70 degrees and, uh, Celsius. And this roof only gets like 35, depending wow, on the so outside half temperature. The, half the temperature. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty yeah. impressive. 
So when did you paint the roof white and kind of like? Well, it's actually a mineral. Yeah. It's on the. It's integrated in the finish of the roof, huh. and um, the minerals on mm. the roof they and, um, extract the the small particles mm. from the air which mm. pollute the air, mm. and uh, when the rain comes down the roof, it washes off and mm -hmm. then it goes in the ground. And so it's a little bit more pure, yeah. purified. It's an, also an air purifier. Wow. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So sustainability is also an, um, important for us and in different aspects from the plants, but also the construction, the house, the way we use energy and produce energy and eat our and, uh, own produced food. And that way we try to and, um, and, uh, make our footprint as small as possible, even though we have a large house, but it was already built. Mm -hmm. But the footprint and, uh, can be and, uh, made small. Well, this is uh, really a part of what you do professionally as well, yeah. so yeah. it's important. It's also to, my work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's your work, so it's important yeah. to kind of like showcase it and live it, and um, and you are, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Even though it's like no small task, you yeah. know, it seems like you have a lot of work to do, it's, it's and, like and you've you done a lot of work. It's like you have to practice what you preach. Indeed, so, yeah. indeed, and learn from it because yeah. I think with a lot of these experimental livings or experimental homes, you know, as you were sharing before it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the, the right way, it's yeah. just a way that you're t testing out exactly. and you yeah. don't really know what is the best way until you actually test it. Yeah. So, marvelous. Uh, is there more of the garden that we should see? Yeah, okay. well, we have this uh, more jungle-like part. Mm -hmm. We have to sneak through the leaves then. Well, this is our south-facing terrace and in summer it gets really we hot here. Here we go. And yeah. we have some figs. Yeah. And this stays here in all winter, all year round. And some echinacea and yeah. some lavender. And it does very well uh, hmm. at this uh, spot because of the the heat of the sun is reflected by the facade, mm -hmm. and this place warms up uh, a bit more than other places in the garden. It's really nice that you have these little microclimates, yeah. and you become sensitive to those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and place the plants on the correct place. A little bee, like yeah. a pollinator house. Yeah, exactly. Do you know this food? This looks like a... Sharon th food. No, oh, I have not seen this. It's, um, it's, an, uh, it's winter hardy also, oh. but it's a very nice uh, How do you taste. Eat it? Well, actually the taste mm -hmm. becomes better when the winter frost is and they come over Okay, yeah. so it's similar to like a parsnip or yeah. something, is yeah. that it needs to, to get all the sugars, yeah. 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 So do you then bite it like an apple, or do you open it up like a You Diabana can cut or? it open, yeah. Okay. yeah. And more eat it like, uh, yeah. Like is it like fleshy it's on the inside? It's fleshy okay. inside, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you can see, because of the rain last days, this one, this is the coloring it will get. Oh. I think this one's already good, maybe. Yeah, or it looks overdone. like it um, yeah, yeah. probably like burst a little burst, bit. Yeah. It's like sometimes tomatoes, yeah. that happens with tomatoes. This one also, yeah. And it's nice that it can uh, survive in the winter because this is also a fruit which an, um, I've, I've learned from my childhood in Suriname. So. so it grew in Suriname. Did it grow in like more mountainous areas yeah. that it could handle some of the yeah. cold? Okay. Yeah. Well, actually it's a plant originated from Asia, more the colder places, and, uh, but it's introduced all over the world mm. now. So like because, Moringa, yeah, like, you know, exactly, you, see that yeah. at, you see it everywhere now. Well, here we have the big uh, bananas yeah. and also the Chinese windmill. Nice ball. to see them yeah. now from the, from the, the from ground below, level yeah. as we saw them from the aerial view. And you can see how big they grow because I planted them as small plants yeah. and, uh, when we moved here four years ago and like how will it be in five years from now? <laughs> and this gives you a little bit of perspective, us standing next yeah. to it, so you can actually see the height yeah. that it is. And depending on the winter, and um, if it's and, um, if the temperature drops very low, the trunk will and, uh, disappear. Yeah. But the roots will and, uh, deliver new and um, sprouts in the spring. Do you find that even if the, it gives new sprouts in the springs, that it, that it grows up pretty fast, pretty high, or well, pretty high, pretty fast? Yes, yeah. but also more on the stems. More on the stems, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. So this was from last, from two years ago. Uh -huh. There was standing one banana, now there are three. 
So if the winter is <laughs> a bit colder, yeah, maybe they will be double. Yeah. yeah, and d has, these haven't fruited yet no. then? Okay. No. I wonder, if, I wonder if they do, you know, even though they're It's possible. A I've seen it in, uh, from other uh, Dutch gardeners. Yeah. But, um, but you have to protect them very well in the winter. And this is also a nice one with more larger leaves. Well, this is a normal uh, Tachy, Tachycarpus uh, fortunae. Mm -hmm. But this is a new hybrid with more uh, longer uh, leaves. What and do you think you causes see. this? Is this just like light? Or I think that an, um, when, the, when the spear comes out, mm -hmm. maybe it got damaged mm. in the storm or the, by an, a bug, an insect. Mm -hmm. And, and um, because it's folded together, the damage is on the same yeah, uh, place. Yeah, it's quite neat patterning, the same. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love how you have like a lot of these like non-native species that you wouldn't typically think yeah. about growing in a garden or you'd see them in like kind of a more subtropical yeah. climate with like together with some more, more natural, natural yeah, exactly. you know, growing plants. I see like a little yeah. even pear the, growing over there Yeah, too. and even the roses are blooming yeah. now. Yeah. These are the last blooming roses of this year. Man, so many late season gifts that yeah. you still have here. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one of the benefits in uh, living in an eco district where nature mm -hmm. and architecture and living is in balance. And uh, they, the whole area is based also on permaculture principles. Mm -hmm. So that all the, the circles are closed, mm -hmm. uh, not only in the way you live, but also in the way you use nature and the plants around you. Yeah, it's very, it feels very seamless. And even though the houses are separate, they still yeah. feel very connected part of the yeah. landscape. And they even did a research and, um, by a few universities and they discovered that like this was like home, just, just flatland and uh, it was not special, just some sheep grazing around and some fruit trees. And uh, that was more than 20 years ago. But when they built this in an area in just like six or seven years, and um, they did like this monitoring program and, and they counted the number of plants and, and um, animals living here and they discovered that more than 40 endangered species were discovered here hmm. which were not living here but came here as right. a kind of an, a reserved area where, to, where they can live. Right, and, so yeah. there was an it was an agricultural area before and probably yeah. not diverse at all and then as some this area was developed and people moved in with all the different kinds of plantings, it became a very diverse yeah. area. And using the permaculture principles, mm -hmm. in the, it came in balance. Yeah. yeah, which just goes to show, like we always hear about the impacts of, that humans have on yeah. our planet, and it's always the negative impacts. Yeah. But you could also see how you can live more in harmony with nature yeah. and actually be a positive impact. The same way that we could, we could actually regenerate soil more yeah. easily, um, you know, by composting our food waste and yeah. our plant waste and our yard waste and by selecting plants that kind of grow well together. And I know some people who are so used to kind of curated gardens would say, oof, this is a little bit too wild for me. But that is exactly what you want to do in permaculture principles yeah. is just kind of mimic the way that you would yeah. see in a regular ecosystem, which is often unmanicured yeah. and uncurated. And have a great variety of mixtures of exactly. different plants and species. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this has been a marvelous tour, both indoors yeah. and out, and I just, Really, thank you for opening up your home yeah. and your backyard to us as and well. And thank you for uh, coming by. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I had to, you know, ever since seeing you last year, you know, working on the house, I'm glad we could actually come full circle yeah. and, uh, and yeah. see you here in your natural element. And maybe how it will look in five years. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Five more years, I mean, you're going to be in a true jungle environment. You're going to be expanding yeah. your roof up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How did you enjoy Amar's houseplant home tour and the variety of plants he was growing? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're wondering how to keep track and care for your growing plant collection, then check out my houseplant care spreadsheets. Get the 125 houseplant care spreadsheet 
or enroll in the Houseplant Masterclass to access the 350 Care Spreadsheet. You'll also get information on the Houseplant Care Tracker, which sends you automatic reminders to water and fertilize your plants. Additionally, you'll be able to record, track, and share important milestones in your plant's life. What more can a plant mom and dad ask for? Details on homesteadbrooklyn.com and in the description below.